Hello everyone and welcome to my very first full-fledged level 50 build. The reason you're getting a full level 50 build is that I recently spent all of my perk points respecking and maxing out damage, specifically in order to make this particular character. The special for this character is 12 strength, 12 perception, 6 endurance, 4 charisma, 8 intelligence, 7 agility and 7 luck. Strength and Endurance are here mostly to boost melee damage, carry weight, hit points and resistances, whilst all the other stats are raised primarily to get a decent number of perks in them. The perks for this build will be split into Essential and Recommended, depending on just how critical each perk is to the character. To start off in Essential we have the Gladiator perks. This no doubt seems a bit out of place for a character with Sniper in the name, but there's good reason for it. There's plenty of times when your sniper will either be overkill or not practical, so I decided to have a sword as a secondary to use in these situations. I only went for a single rank of each of these perk cards in order to reduce overall perk investment. Additionally, I decided to include Incisor and Martial Artist. These help improve melee weapon combat effectiveness and also reduce the weight. In Perception, we have our most important essential perks, Rifleman, Expert Rifleman and Master Rifleman all at the max rank. This will eat up 9 out of 12 of your perception points, however it's certainly worth it for a bonus 60% damage. The extra damage will help to ensure you're killing your enemies in one shot as often as possible. On to Endurance now, where I've decided to mark Sunkist and Photosynthetic as the essential perks. These two combined will lead to health and radiation regen during daylight hours. This is a huge benefit for any character, reducing the number of healing items you use up, and most importantly, reducing your reliance on Radaway. In Charisma, I've gone for the max rank of Lone Wanderer. 20% less damage taken and 30% AP regen. What's not to like? Obviously, if you're playing with a team, then you want to swap out this perk for something that works. I personally tend to play snipers mostly solo, so I figured Lone Wanderer would make sense. On to Intelligence, where I've maxed out the Gunsmith perk. This will reduce gun degradation by 50% meaning it's less likely for your weapon to break on you. With Agility, I've included the first rank of Sneak, and Covert Operative at rank 2. As a sniper, you'll be trying to keep your distance from your enemies, so I personally didn't find more than a single rank of Sneak all that necessary for remaining hidden. All you're really looking for here is the chance to remain undetected after taking your first shot. As for Covert Operative, the more ranks you have here, the better. At rank 2, ranged Sneak attacks do 2.3 times damage. This might not sound a whole lot at first, but that extra 0.3 times damage makes a whole lot of difference when tied in with a high base damage and boost from the Rifleman perks. The only reason I didn't have this at rank 3 was I had run out of perk points. As our final stat, we have Luck with the perks Starch Jeans and Bloody Mess. These are fairly standard perks for my builds at this point. Starch Jeans help you keep control of your mutations, and Bloody Mess will add a flat 15% damage boost to all your weapons once maxed out. On to our recommended perks now, where we fill in the blanks for strength. I had both Travelling Pharmacy and Bandolier maxed out, whilst also having Ordnance Express at rank 2. These are all perks designed to reduce the weight of items you're carrying, helping you to deal with the fact that it can be all too easy to become over-encumbered in 76. Feel free to change these perks around to whichever combination helps you deal with carry weight the most. In Perception, I've included Sniper, Longshot and Glow Sight. I wasn't sure at first how effective Sniper would be, but just a single rank of it reduces weapon sway with Snipers considerably. On top of that, it reduces how many action points you eat up holding your breath whilst ADS, helping to further ensure you hit where you're actually pointing. The Longshot perk increases range and accuracy by 10% while sighted. I personally find the range of Gorse Rifles a little disappointing, so everything that boosts this is certainly helpful. As the final Perception perk, I've included Glow Sight, boosting damage against glowing enemies by 20%. This is of course somewhat situational, but it adds a significant damage boost to some of the toughest enemies in the game, and it is a particular advantage in Blast Zones, where glowing ghouls are all too prevalent. I've got four different perks and endurance that I've yet to cover. Ghoulish, Radical, Aquaboy and Adamantium Skeleton. I count pretty much all of these as sorts of convenience perks. Radiation regenerates lost health and boosts strength, you can swim without anything to worry about, and your limbs cripple less often with Adamantium Skeleton. These are all nice little bonuses that don't change the character in its entirety, but do just make it more fun and easy to play. In Intelligence, I also had batteries included maxed out. This perk reduces the weight of energy weapon ammo, 
meaning you can carry more than enough 2mm electromagnetic cartridges without having to worry so much about what they're doing to your inventory. On to agility, where I've got Fru Hiker and White Knight. Like the strength perks, Fru Hiker is here to deal with carry weight, this time reducing the weight of food and drink. The White Knight perk makes your armour break slower, making it less likely to break on you during a fight. Additionally, this perk makes it cheaper to repair, a bonus that any player can appreciate. Finally, we have Luck, where I've included Good With Salt and Grim Reaper Sprint. Good With Salt reduces how quickly food spoils, and it's a perk I've grown to love. The effects are simple and straightforward, but help to ensure you've got plenty of food available whenever you're out and about. Grim Reaper Sprint is a bit more of a specific perk. This perk, at the first rank, makes it so that any kill you get in bats has a 15% chance to restore all of your action points. I found bats of particular use with this build when fighting highly mobile enemies, such as Scorch Beasts, but also when fighting against hordes. The chance of getting your action points back may be small, but I wanted a chance to rely a little more on bats with this build, especially for anyone who isn't that accustomed to FPS games. If you want an easy way to check any of this, I'll be leaving a link to the Nukes Dragon site in the description for you all. The primary weapon for this build is a Gorse Rifle, in my case an instigating Gorse Rifle. This is a high damage, slow firing rifle, which makes it fit perfectly into the sniper category once you've got a good scope on it. My personal preference with this build was a long recon scope. Normally I prefer standard sights or scopes, I like to see my targets clearly, but in this case I felt a recon variant fitted in more with the theme of the build. The additional bonus is that it allows you to tag enemies letting you keep an eye on enemy movements and decide how best to engage. The other key part to how I modded out this weapon was that I didn't have a silencer, compensator, or anything of the sort. I said earlier that the range of a Gorse Rifle feels a little disappointing to me, and adding anything that reduces that range further wasn't something I was even willing to consider. As my secondary weapon, I had myself a Chinese officer sword. I decided on this particular weapon as I felt it had the best aesthetic fit to the character. It might not be the most powerful melee weapon out there, but it made sense for what my vision of this guy was. I also made sure to keep a healthy supply of orbital strike and orbital scan grenades. The scan grenades work out in the same sort of way as the recon scope, tagging targets for you. The strike beacons are the really fun ones, allowing you to call in some major firepower. These are great for taking out large groups of enemies or dealing heavy damage to some of the bigger foes the game will throw at you. As is standard for these builds, the armour you will have depends heavily on what legendary drops you get. One legendary effect I would recommend keeping an eye out for is the chameleon effect. This will make you turn invisible whilst crouched and not moving, a situation you'll find yourself in quite often when playing as a sniper. As for aesthetic pieces, you'll want yourself an enclave officer's hat and uniform. For mutations, the one I find most useful with snipers is marsupial. The extra jump height means you can get great vantage points with perfect line of sight. I also had Speed Demon and Healing Factor, however these are more just generically helpful mutations that I stick with, as opposed to anything specifically designed for this build. I'm hoping to eventually learn all of the serum recipes in order to tailor craft some builds around mutations, but that's going to take a long time to learn all of those. For the most part, you play this character as a typical sniper. Keep your distance, line up your shots, and take down your targets as efficiently as possible. With a powerful enough Gorse Rifle, you can one-shot the majority of enemies you come across. Just make sure to hold down the trigger long enough to fully charge your shots. Your sword comes in handy as a powerful secondary. I personally used it on a number of different occasions. If I was getting swarmed, going up against something with high energy resistance, or just if the enemies I was facing against weren't worth wasting the ammo on. I feel like I should add more to the playstyle section, but that really is it. Sniper to take out enemies at range, sword up close, and orbital strikes if things get out of hand. Like many wandering Appalachia nowadays, the Enclave Sniper was born inside a Vault 76. Being only a late team when he leaves the Vault, he hasn't really experienced much of a world. Most of what he knows having come from his mother who raised him. She had been a politician before the war. Nothing too high up, but important enough for her to consider herself above most people. Her husband had been in the Secret Service, a brave man who died in the line of duty before the Enclave Sniper was born. His sacrifice had helped his wife's career out no end, providing her plenty of perks, most importantly of all, a place inside of Vault 76. The worldly amongst you will realise that this man can't be the boy's father. He too ended up realising this, although not until he was well into his teens. 
Whenever he asked his mother about who his father was, she adamantly told him that it was her deceased husband. As the boy grew older, his desire to learn who his real father was grew too. He would ask his mother again and again, knowing that eventually she would cave in and tell the truth. In time, his persistence seemed to yield some results. She relented and told him that she would tell him, but only come Reclamation Day. She died two years before that day came. He spent those last two years unsure of what to do when he left the vault. All he'd been taught was how to be a politician and the functions of government. He had a suspicion that when the doors opened, diplomacy and order wouldn't exist anymore. He took it upon himself to learn self-defense. Several of the residents inside of the vault were ex-military, and he sought out their help, learning what he could from them. There weren't weapons for him to train with, but he studied what theory he could and got himself in shape. There was an old sniper inside of the vault who took a specific interest in training the team. He explained to him the intricacies of tracking your target, staying hidden as you line up the perfect shot, and then relocating in order to stay alive, whilst readying yourself for the next target. When it came to the big day, he was originally hoping to travel with the old sniper for some time. Someone to look out for him in the new dangerous world wouldn't go amiss, but the man explained that he couldn't accompany him. Apparently, there was something more important for him to do. The Enclave sniper was left to travel the region all alone. He carried on developing his combat skills until he ran across the Enclave. Finding a remnant of the US government still existed, he saw a chance to use the knowledge his mother had taught him. He decided to join up with Modus, and see just how far he could go within the ranks of the Enclave. After all, who knows where it could lead. Thank you all for watching this latest build. If you did enjoy it, make sure you leave a like on the video. If you're new, make sure that you've subscribed and clicked the notification bell so that you don't miss any of my content. As always, thanks for watching. Sarge out.